Hello guys, in this video I am going to show you how you can create an advanced box shadow generator using react.js. So what do I mean by that? So here we have some controls and we, using these inputs you can create a box shadow just the way you want. So as you can see, we can see the preview here. Let's add some blur. We can change the color like so. And not only that, we can make it inset also and we can also add another layer. So let's add another layer. Let's try to change the color of this like so or let's choose some blue color like so. You can add as many layers as you want. Finally in the bottom you'll see we'll get the generated code so you can simply be able to copy this and paste it in your project. So this is a really exciting project and really useful too. So make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started. I'm going to start by creating a new folder here. So new folder and I'm going to call it shadow gen for a shadow generator. And let's open it up and click right click and click on open with VS code so it will open with VS code now click on terminal new terminal and I want to use git bash you can use any terminal you want here we can say npx create dash react dash app and now you would specify your app name instead I am going to put a dot so the react app will be created in this folder shadow gen folder so let's wait for the installation to finish okay so our project is now installed so what i'm going to do is simply delete the source folder entirely so we can start from scratch so new folder and we're going to create the source folder back and inside the source folder we need to have a index.js so new file index.js so here first we're going to import react so we're going to say import react and we're going to import react from react we also want to import react dom and then we are going to say react dom dot render so react dom dot render for now let's just render a basic paragraph text and it will say hello world and if we open up our public slash index dot html here you'll see we have a div with the id of root so we want to render our paragraph text in that div so we are going to say document dot get element by id we want to get the div that has the id of root so now close the bracket and save it and let's start our dev server by saying npm start so npm start and let's wait for the development server to start so as you can see our development server has been started at localhost colon 3000 and for now we just have this hello world text so instead of just saying paragraph text I want to create an app component so I'm going to click on new file and I'm going to say app.js so app.js here we are going to have a function so function and we are going to call it app and for now let's just also return simple h1 here so I'm going to say return and for now let's just return an h1 and say app component like so so now let's use the app component in our index.js so first we are going to import app so we are going to say import app from dot forward slash app and here instead of rendering hello world we are going to render our app component so we are going to say app save it okay to be able to import the app like this we need to first export the app in from here so we are going to say export default so export default and we are going to export our app function so save it and now it says app component okay let's include a style sheet in our project so inside the source folder i'm going to create a new folder called assets inside the assets folder i'm going to create a new css file so let's say style.css and for now let's just say everything to have my margin of zero and padding of zero so margin zero and padding of also zero and let's say our body to have a font family of Arial. So I'm going to say body to have a font family. So font family of Arial. So now we have to include this style sheet in our project. So in the index.js, I'm simply going to say import. And we're going to import dot forward slash assets slash style.css. So dot forward slash assets. And save it. It should be style.css, sorry. You'll see our styles was also added, so everything is working fine. So our project setup is done. So now in the app component, instead of just rendering a h1, I want to start creating our app. So in, we're going to wrap it inside a parenthesis to make it look more more good. So I'm going to have a div that will have a class of containers. So create a div, and the div will have a class of container. So class name equals to container like so so inside that div we need to have two sections one section is our preview section and one section is our control section so let's create a div with a class of preview so we're going to say div with a class name of preview 
let's close it so like so let me fix the indentation and for now let's just say it will say hello inside it so I'm going to say hello and I'm going to copy this so all shift down to copy and this this div will have a class of controls like so and it can say world like so so now let's target our container control C and go to our style.css so inside that let's paste the class and here let's say just so that we can see it let's give it a background color of red for now so background color of red so I want it to have a height of 100 viewport height so I'm going to say height of 100 viewport height so 100 VH like so so our container will have a display of flex so we're going to say display flex and inside the container we have a div with a class of preview and a div with a class of control so let's target them so we're going to say controls and all the divs inside that they should have a flex grow of one so let's say flex grow of one so now they're taking 50 percent and 50 percent of the entire width like so so let me remove the background color and change the red color to some gray colors something more lighter and yeah this should work so now inside our app.js here we are going to also have a div with a class of preview box so let's create a div with a class of preview box so class name and the class name will be preview box and let's close the sidebar and let me copy that class control c go to our style.css and let's target our preview box so dot control v preview box let's say this should have a height let's say height of let's say 150 pixel and a width of 150 pixel so let's say width equals to 150 pixel but we can see it so let's give it a background color so let's say background color of let's say again let's use red so here is our box now I want the box to be center here so let's say let's target our preview so dot container dot preview Let's say this should also have a display of flex so we're going to say display flex and we're again going to say justify content to center and align items to center so justify content center and align items to also center so if we save it as you can see our div is now centered in this container or this previous div so now let's say this should have a border radius so let's say border radius of let's say let's try 5 pixel so 5 pixel or let's try 10 pixel yeah, 10 pixels should be good enough let's say the background color to be white so hashtag FFF like so so here is our div we can see it so let's make the background a little more darker save it and yeah now the white is a little bit more visible so this should be all for our preview section now let's go to our control section so inside the control section we're going to create a div with a class of controls box like so let me close the div so here we are going to have some input so let's create a input and the type of our input will be range and the minimum should be let's say negative 100 so negative 100 and the maximum should be 100 and by default the value will be 0 and we can give it a class name of slider we don't need an id so let's delete that and this needs to be a self closing text since, here, since we are using jsx like so so if you save it here is our range slider also the value should be default value since we are using react here so we are going to say default default value equals to 0 like so so now we can change it like so so let me style our controls box so let me copy the class control c go to our index dot actually go to our style of css and let's paste the class control box will have a background color or dark color so some dark background color so let's choose some dark color and yeah this should work so let's also target our controls so dot controls and our controls will have a padding so we are going to say padding of let's say let's try 1 em and yeah 1 em should be fine let's also add some padding in our controls box so let's say padding of 1 em also i also want some border radius here so let's say border radius of 10 pixel also i'm going to say everything to have a box sizing of border box so box sizing a border box like so so now here is how our controls box looks like let's also add some shadow here so we're going to say box shadow 
and let's try 0 pixels from the x-axis, 3 pixels from the y-axis and let's say the bar should be 6 pixels and we're going to use some transparent black color so we're going to say RGBA000 and the opacity will be 1.5 save it and now we have just a little bit of shadow okay now let's tell our input so we're going to say input that has a type of range so type equals to range and we're going to say our input should have a width of 100% so we're going to say width of 100% this will also have a display of block so we're going to say display block so now our input spans across the entire width of its container like so and the default value of input is 50 so it is in the middle let's add some more inputs so let's go to our app here so let's inside the, before the input we're also going to have a label so let's create a label and the first label will say offset x so offset x like so save it so we can see it because the color is dark so let's go to our style sheet again and go to our controls box and say the color should be white so color hashtag FFF so now we can see our label here so let's go back again and let me copy this a few more times so all shift down 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 so one will be for the y axis so x y and the next one will be for our blur so let's say blur and for blur the mean will be 0 and the max will be 100 save it so now we have this and finally we also want to have a spread so we are going to say spread and the spread will also be 0 to 100 save it let's add some margin bottom to our input so let's go to our style sheet and say input time range should have a margin bottom so margin bottom of let's try 1 em Yeah, 1 em looks good so let's add just a little bit of margin bottom to our label as well so we're going to say label and have a margin bottom so margin bottom of let's try 0.5 em they also need to have a display of block for the margin to work so we're going to say display block like so so now it is looking a little bit better and finally we want to have a input type of color so we can choose the color of our shadow so let's do that so go to our app component let me copy this again and this one will say color this one won't say offset also this won't say offset blur and offset spread it will just say blur and spread so blur and spread and this will say color and this one will have a input type of color and we don't need all these attributes so let's delete this So now we have this input type color, let's say this input type color should also have a display of blocks. So let's go to our style sheet and let's instead of just saying input type ranges, we're also going to say input type color. So let me copy this. So control C and control V. So here it will say color. Finally we'll have an, a checkbox that will say if the shadow should be inset or not. So let's go to our app component and this time I'm just going to use a paragraph text. So P inside the paragraph text first we'll have a text so let's create a span here so span inside the span we're going to say insert colon and then we're going to have an input type of checkbox so we're going to say input type of checkbox save it and now we have this input type checkbox so let's say this span should have some margin on the right so let's say this should have a style of margin right so we're going to say margin right let's try 0.5 em okay since we are in react we need to use the object here so we'll use object like this so and instead of saying margin right we have to say margin right like this and we have to wrap this in quotes so so now everything works we have this checkbox here now what i want to do is create a separate component for this controls input so let me cu cut all of this so control x open up my sidebar control B sidebar and here I'm going to create a new file I'm going to call it control box.js so inside that let's create a function so function the name will be control box so inside that let's just return that markup that we had 
and fix the indentation save it and now we want to use it in our app component so first we need to import it so here we are going to say oops we are going to say import and we want to import control box so control box from dot forward slash control box dot js since we are importing it like this we need to export it again so we are going to say export default default control box like so so now here let's just use that control box control v like so save it and this works the same but now if we want it we could add as many controls box as we want like so okay let's add some margin bottom to our control box so let's go to our style.css and go to our control box so let's say margin bottom so margin bottom of let's say okay, it should be 1 em so let's say 1 em and now we have this margin bottom also in the container instead of saying height we are going to say mean height like so okay let's delete some of them so in the app component we just want one control box for now save it okay so now let's go to our control box so here i'm going to create a variable that will store the value of all these inputs so i'm going to create an object so i'm going to say const i'm going to use use state for this so i'm going to say import use state from react so you state from react like so and in the square bracket I'm going to say shadow model so shadow model and set sh shadow model equals to use state and we are going to have an object so we are going to have an object the object will have some properties so one will be x so x will be 0 initially then we'll have y we'll also have blur we'll have spread we are going to have color and finally we are going to have inset so we are going to say inset and inset will be false by default so like so okay so now let's use them in our input so we are going to say when the input changes we want to change the value of this so to do that i'm going to create a helper function so we are going to say const we are going to call it update shadow model so update shadow model and this function will take two arguments so one will be the property and the second one will be value so the property we want to change and the value we want to set to so we are going to say prop for property and val for value so val like so so here what we want to do is say set shadow model here we want to first use the spread operators to use the defaults and then we want to update the property to value so for example if i said x equals to 10 this will be same but the x will be updated to 10 so now let's use them so in the our input so let's say in the first one let's use the on change so we're going to say on change and on change we're going to run this function so this will take event as its argument this will call the update shadow model function so we're going to say update shadow model and we want to update the x so here we are we're going to pass x and the value will be e.target.value so we are going to say e.target.value so the value of our input target.value like so so let's use it in all our, okay it looks like we have some error let's see what is that okay we have to close it with a curly brace let's copy this so control c to copy and paste it in our other input so let's add it to our input for the y offset so let's say paste it here control v and this time we want to update the y so y and then we have the blur this time it will be blur and then we have the spread right yeah then we have the spread so let's say spread then we have color so here is our input type color let's paste it here also control v here it will say color and then we have this input type of checkbox control v let's use that also so this will say inset and for this one instead of saying e.target.value we are going to say shadow model so we are going to say shadow model dot and we want to get the inset and we want to set the x 
opposite of that so we are going to say exclamation mark shadow model like so okay let's also import the use state here use effect here so we are going to say import use effect or we can just import it here so we are going to import use effect and let's use the use effect so we are going to say use effect and we want this function to run whenever our shadow model changes so we are going to say shadow model and here let's just console log our shadow model so console log shadow model so let's okay it looks like we have an error let's see what is that okay we have to close it save it open up our console by default we have this object let's try to update our offset x as you can see the object updates we, let's try to make it inset as you can see the inset is true let's choose a different color so we can choose any color we want and the color becomes the value of that color like so so now everything is working okay so now let's go back to our app component so the, in our app component here i'm going to import use effect also so let's say import we want to import use effect we want to import use state sorry from react like so so now we are going to have a shadow so we're going to say const shadow and set shadow so shadow set shadow equals to by default it will be a empty string let's say empty string and then we're going to have a function called update shadow so let's create that so we're going to say const update shadow equals to a function that will take shadow as its argument so we can say shadow actually let's call it something else since we already have shadow here so let's say s for shadow and here we're simply going to say set shadow to the shadow we pass so like so so now i want to pass this function as a prop to our control box so let me copy this and we're going to say update shadow so update shadow equals to update shadow like so so save it now let's go to our okay let me just copy this control c and go to our control box so here when the shadow model changes what we want to do is call the update shadow function but we need to receive it in our function first as a prop so let's go to our control box here we want to accept the update shadow function as a prop so save it now in the app component let's again console log the shadow so let's say console log shadow like so save it and open up our console okay it looks like we have a warning so let's go to our control box and we need to just you add this to our dependency array so let's add it save it and now we don't have any error so refresh and let's try to change something so as you can see as we change the change any property our shadow model updates like so okay now instead of saying shadow equals to our object we want our shadow to be a string of shadow so let's say let's use template string here we are going to say dollar sign curly brace inside that we are going to say is dot x and here we are going to say pixel and then let me copy this so copy and paste it a few more times so this one will be y and this one will be blur and then we have the spread so let's say dollar sign actually let's paste it control v and this will say this dot s dot spread to pixel and finally we have color so we are going to say s dot color we don't need pixel for this one so s dot color and let's try to console log our shadow again so let's say console dot log we want to console log our shadow save it and let's try to update it so as you can see now as we update our inputs the shadow changes and we have a string of shadows so let, now we can use it in our preview box so we are going to say style so let's say style equals to box shadow and the box shadow will be the shadow so shadow like so save it and now we can use this inputs to control the shadow so let me refresh and let's say the x offset should be let's try this much the y can be this the blur can be this the spread can be this the color whatever color we want like so 
okay we are going getting close now we want to be able to use multiple controls or multiple shadows so let's say let's create a variable called shadows so we are going to have const shadows and set shadows so set shadows here by default it will be an empty string and in our update shadow function we don't want to use this so let me control forward slash to comment it and instead of that we are going to say our set shadow so set shadow whatever the shadow we already had and here we are going to say this so let me co copy this so control c and paste it control v like so and then we are going to use use effect also so let me import use effect so let's say use effect and let's use the use effect so we are going to say use effect And we want to run the function every time our shadows changes so shadows like so so whenever the shadows changes what we want to do is for now let's just say set shadow so set shadow and we can simply say shadows join and we want to join them with a comma let me delete this line and if we save it okay we have some error let's see what is that so const is not defined it should be const okay the errors are now gone so let's try to use it again so now if we try to change something as you can see our shadow is not working as it was before so something is definitely wrong so we are also going to create an array for our control so we're going to say const controls goes to it will be array of object so in the object we, we just want the index so we're going to say index equals to the first one will be zero let's say Okay, so now instead of just saying controls, we want to loop through our controls array. So let's do that. So we're going to say controls dot map. So controls dot map, and for all the controls, we want to render this con control control box. Okay, in the control box, we also also want to send the index as a prop. So we're going to say id equals to, and it will be c dot index. So c dot index save it and in our control box we want to receive the index also so we are going to receive it id as a prop and inside the update instead of calling the update shadow function like this now we are also going to pass the id so id here like so so now let's go back to our app.js so our, now our update shadow function here so update shadow will not take the shadow but not only take the shadow but also take the index so as id so here like so so we are going to say the First, we are going to create a temporary variable of, by cloning our original array. So, we are going to say const t for temp equals to. So, const t equals to like this. And we want to change. And we don't want this. So, cut. Control x. And now, what, are, what we are going to say is say t. And we are going to target our index. So, that, so the element in the index should be changed to th this, the new shadow. So, save this. And let's see if it works now. Okay, it's telling us to also add ID to our dependency array. So let's try to do that. So here let's say ID. Save it. And let's see if it works any better now. So it still does not work. So let's see why is that. Okay, well finally we have to say set shadows. So we're going to say set shadows to T. Save it. Let's try to update our controls again so now it is again working just the way it was working before so now if we were to add another item to our array so for example copy this so alt shift down and here we could simply say index equals to one so one save it and now we have two controls so if we were to change that now we have multi-layer shadows we can have three objects if we wanted so let's all shift down and let's give it an index of two save it so now we have three three controls and we can change all the all the shadows individually so instead of manually adding them by default we'll have only one in one object and then we're also going to have a button here that will say add add control so let's do that so in our app component inside our controls here we want to have a paragraph text first so here we're going to create a paragraph text and the paragraph text will have a class of text dash right Inside that we are going to have a button. So we are going to say button. And our button will say add layer for, for adding a layer of shadow. So add layer like so save it. Here is our button. So let's now style them. So let me copy the class here. Go to our style.css and paste it. And so the text right will have a text align of right. So text align right. Save it. So now our button is in the right side. Let's target our button. Let's say the button should have a border and outline of none. So let's say border equals to none. 
and the outline will also be none so outline equals to none save it and now we want some background color so we're going to say background color equals to let's choose a blue color so let's try to choose a blue color and yeah this should work let's add some padding so let's say padding 0.75 em from top and bottom and left right should be 1 em save it so this is how our button looks so let's add some more styles here so let's say border radius of 3 pixel the color will be white so color equals to white the text transform will be uppercase so text transform of uppercase save it so this is how it looks let's also say it a font weight to bold so font weight to bold save it so this is our button so now when we click on this button we want to add another object to our array so let's see how we can do that so let's go to our app component so here is our add button so let's say on click so we're gonna say on click and when it is click we want to run a function called add shadow so add shadow copy this so control c and we want to create this function now so let's go here and let's create the function so let's say function so we called it add shadow so what this will do is add a new element to our controls array so instead of having this controls array as just a regular array we are going to use use state here so we are going to say const controls and set controls so controls set controls equals to by default it will be array with only one object so we are going to say index equals to zero so index equals to zero if we save this this works the same but now we will be able to add another object to our array so let's see how we can do that so inside our add shadow function we are going to say set shadow and here we are going to say the previous elements of our array and also add another object with the index equals to controls dot length save it so now if we click on add shadow we can add as many layer as we want okay it looks like we have a lot of error okay it looks like we have we are getting error that is because we are updating our state inside the use effect so we don't want to use that so let's comment it out so control forward slash like so so instead we can just simply use this so control c and we can paste it here so box shadow equals to instead of just saying shadow we are going to paste it control v and now we don't even need our shadow property so here we, are, we can delete this shadow save it okay it looks like we we're still having some errors so inside the control box we need to remove these two from our dependency array so save it and refresh and now it is working as intended so as you can see we can control our shadow control our color blur spread we can add another layer we can we can change the shadow here also so blur can be this the color can be let's say this like so Till now we, are, we were not using inset so let's use the inset also so let's go to our index app.js so here instead of just saying id equals to this we are going to use a ternary operator here so we are going to say we are going to say s dot inset so s dot inset if it is true then what we want to do is have this and we are going to say inset in front so inset otherwise we can just have that string so colon and paste it so save it now and let's re refresh close our console so now if we try to refresh try to change our our control the shadow changes and we can make it inset also so as you can see now the shadow is inside the box let's increase the blur and the shadow can be either outside or inside as we want and we can have multi-layer shadow like so so now what we want to do is show our output in a here so let's do that so here we are going to have a div so in the app component here we are going to have a div with a class of code so so inside that i want to have a span so we are going to create a span and the span will say prop name so class name equals to prop name and it will say box shadow so box dash shadow colon and then we are going to have another span that will have a class of co code so span this one will have a class name of code and we want to show the generated code inside this span so let's do that so let's say we can simply copy this so control c and you can paste it here save it and now we get our oops we need to use curly brace here and now we get our generated shadow here let's also give this div a class of control box 
So now it, this is how it looks. So let's style it. So again, copy the class, Control C, go to our style sheet, and paste it. We are going to say dot quotes, dot control box, and this will have some margin top. So let's say margin top of let's say one em, and let's say dot quotes dot quotes. So dot quotes and dot code inside that. This should have some different color. So we can say color. Equals to let's use some orange color here. So let's try some orange color. Save it, and this is how it looks like. And finally, we need to have a semicolon. So let's add a semicolon here also, like so. So now we get our generated shadow here. So instead of just saying a comma, let's say a comma and a space. So this is how our code generated code looks like. We can have multiple layers, and the code will be changed according to that. We can change the values here, and as you can see, the property changes here also. And of course, we can see our changes in our preview box here also. So now we have successfully created a advanced box shadow generator using React. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.